But what Jesus said in Matthew 5 is extremely important to help us understand these Old Testament changes as well. And you don't have to turn there. Turn, if you would, to, um, to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm going to read a few passages for you while you're turning there. Matthew 5, verse 17, Jesus said this. He said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. So, a key aspect to understanding the law and what should be in effect today and what shouldn't be is first just understanding that just because Jesus Christ came, He didn't just destroy all the law. Because other people look at verses and say, oh, yeah, but it says we're not under the law, we're under grace. Yeah, I know. But Jesus said He didn't come to destroy the law. Because if there was no law, then there would be no sin. We're not under the law because we're not relying on how good we are and our good works to save us. We're putting our faith in Jesus Christ, our Savior, to save us from the law, from the sins of the law, from our sins, by transgressing the law. So because we have Christ, we're no longer under that judgment or the curse of the law. That's all that means. But Jesus said, Think not, I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. So what is he talking about fulfilled? The whole Bible is about Jesus Christ. Literally. The Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God incarnate. What we have in our hands with this books contain the Word of God. This is all about Jesus Christ himself. He is the embodiment of the Word. And Everything that the law has, there's a, there's a fulfillment aspect to it. And when he came to this earth in the, in the flesh and died on the cross and rose again from the dead, there were many aspects of the law that were pictures pointing to Jesus Christ that uh, have been fulfilled, which means that they are no longer part of the law because they've been fulfilled. Uh, verse 19 is an important verse, too, in Matthew chapter 5. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. This is just to, to emphasize that we're not throwing out all the law. And we shouldn't be throwing out all the law. And people who are saved that are saying, you don't need to worry about the law, and you don't, you know, they're going to be called least in the kingdom of heaven. They're going to be least. Because you're, you're, you're teaching men not to obey the commandments. And Jesus said, look, you need to, to obey even the least of the commandments. Uh, Colossians 2, verse 16, a little bit more applicable to specifically the Sabbath day. And the reason why I brought up Matthew 5 is because Jesus fulfilled the Sabbath. Jesus is our rest. So we're going to get to that. You're in Hebrews 4. Hebrews 4 talks about that. In Colossians 2, though, we have another reference to... Um, the Sabbath day, in verse 16, the Bible reads, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink, and we're going to get to that soon, or in respect of an holy day, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So they're talking about the holy days, right? Their feasts, the special feasts that they had, they were commanded to participate in. The Sabbath days, you know, the new moon, the meats and the drinks. These ordinances or these laws that were contained in the Old Testament were all a shadow of things to come. And he says, now let no man judge you of that because you're not, you're not under that law anymore to keep those things because Christ has come and fulfilled those aspects of the law. You're in Hebrews chapter 4, look at verse number 1. The Bible reads, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. Look at verse 4. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Now, before we continue any further, the commandment that, that 
of, of, you know, in Exodus chapter 20 and in other places that bring up obeying the Sabbath day, honoring the Sabbath day, keeping it holy, it always points back to creation. It says, for in six days did God create the heaven and earth, and he rested on the seventh day. So Hebrews 4 is bringing up that fact again, that God did rest on the seventh day. So the reason I even mention all of this is because this ties in the actual law of the Sabbath with what we're being taught in Hebrews chapter 4, especially concerning rest. We rest on the Sabbath day. God gave that law to rest on the Sabbath day because God rested on the Sabbath day. But what did God rest from? His works of creating the world, right? The symbolism of the Sabbath day is that we enter into rest when we cease from trusting our works, when we realize it's not about our works, that Sabbath day represented salvation. It's a rest of the Lord. It's a rest where we can rest in Christ, rest in the Lord and not do our own works and be able to be completely satisfied in him.